Hello, science students. We are going to do assessing seismic hazards and risk with code. That's in Concord Consortium at learn.concord.org. Instructions in how to get into the program are on your lab sheet. The most obvious results of moving tectonic plates are earthquakes. In the intervals between earthquakes, we can see from GPS data that plates are in constant motion. What is happening in the period of time between earthquakes? Why do we care that the land is moving at different velocities? In this activity, you'll investigate what's happening along fault boundaries in between earthquakes. Remember, a fault is two plates um, where they interact. And right now we're looking at transform boundaries between plates, which are a fault, or you can have convergent boundaries, you can have divergent boundaries, but a fault is where two plates meet, two separate pieces of rock that make up the Earth's surface come together and interact at that fault. So let's go look at land movement. When we look at the graphic of Earth's tectonic plates, the Pacific plate on the west side of the boundary is moving an average of 30 to 50 millimeters per year. The North American plate for the east of the Pacific plate is hardly moving at all, an average of zero to 20 millimeters of movement per year. So one plate, the Pacific plate, on the west coast of California, out in, mostly out in the ocean, is moving slower than the land plate that California, most of California sits on. What happens to the ground when there are two nearby areas of moving at different velocities? There are two GPS stations in Berkeley, California, shown to the left. Station SBR1 is moving at 29.1 millimeters per year. Station P224 is moving at 24.4 millimeters per year. So they're a little bit different, one's 29 and one's 24. What is the difference in speed between stations SRB1 and P224? Well, I see that the numbers are very different, so I can estimate here. I can say 29 minus 24 is about 5. Can I find the answer that's near 5? I'll let you think about that. The second question here says, think about the land in Berkeley between the GPS stations. What do you think is actually happening to the land and the rock that makes up the continent between these two stations as plates move year after year. So one is moving slow and one is moving a little bit faster. What do you think is gonna happen between these two points? Write that in question number two. We're gonna go to page two. I'm gonna click on the number two just below where you can see. Or you can click on it up here as well. Berkeley is not the only place experiencing land moving at different rates or moving in different directions in California. To study what happens to the land at the edges of two plates, scientists use models to simulate land movement. Geocoder also has one of these models called the deformation simulation. The deformation simulation shown in the geocoder below represents how two tectonic plates with a fault dividing them. There are three GPS stations that monitor the speed of the plates. So we can see those three GPS stations right here. They make a triangle. So to run the deformation simulation to model land movement near a fault, we're gonna to go to the deformation tab here. That's a new tab in the coder. We're gonna grab this block and bring it out. We're gonna to go to the data tab and drag four number blocks into the program workspace. So that's a number block. We'll drag them in here. You can actually just plug them right in. I set the speed at plate one and I've also set it to zero degrees. Plate two, we're gonna set to 30 millimeters per year and then we'll set it also to 180 degrees. So 30 millimeters and 180 degrees for plate two. Now we get to run our simulation. A 
and you can see how this yellow line here in the triangle gets really stretched and distorted. That's deformation. That's just one example of deformation. We can look at the compass widgets below the deformation simulation. So right here and right here. If north is zero and east is 90, south is 180 and west is 270, in what direction did plate one move? We've got it right here. And you can see it's zero degrees. So zero degrees is right there for you. Describe what happens to the land as represented by the grid inside the triangle as a result of this plate movement. Well, you can run the simulation again, which is really nice. You can go here, press run. And the whole thing will run again. And you can see how those two plates are moving and the land is kind of being squished or transformed as they go in different, uh, they go at different speeds. The word deformation means to change shape. Which area in the grid is deformed most? I'll let you do that one. What variables are you able to control with the code blocks? Select all that apply. Size of the triangle, speed of both plates, the number of simulations, the deformation simulations completes, direction of both plates. If you wanted to change the speed of plate one, how would you do it with code? Well, let's look up here. There's the speed, and you could think about what you'd want to put in there. Increase the speed of one plate. You can change it to speeds between zero and 50 millimeters a year. Describe how, how this change changes the deformation of the model. So how does that change in speed playing around with one of these millimeters per year, how does that change what happens over here with the deformation? And that is the introduction to activity four. And we'll do another video to look at lesson pages three, four, and five. Thanks for watching.